In the last video, we started studying syllables. And we saw how syllables are composed of onsets, nuclei, and codas. In this video, we're going to study phonotactics. Phonotactics is what tells you exactly which sounds can go into the onset, the nuclei, and the coda. So the phonotactics of a language is the description of all of its possible syllables. And believe it or not, this little equation here is the description of all possible syllables in English. So the only thing that every English syllable requires is a vowel-like object in it. It could be a simple uh, vowel or it could be a diphthong. Beyond that, the parentheses here indicate that these are optional components. So optionally, a syllable can have one sound in its onset, two sounds in its onset, consonants, or three consonants in its onset. So as you can see here, again, onsets are optional. So you can have English syllables with no onsets, such as on or at. You can have syllables with one onset consonant, like bed and duck. You can have syllables with two onset consonants, like play and green, or even three onset consonants, like split and street. On the other side of the equation, we have the codas. So these are optional, so you can have syllables with no codas, like me. As you can see, it just has the onset, the nucleus, and then there's no consonants afterwards, so no coda. You can have syllables with one, two, three, four, or apparently up to five consonants. These, uh, these are some of the examples that I could find. For example, if you have four consonants in your codas, you could have a word like prompts. Um, three consonants would be something like quartz, where you have the R, the T, and uh, the S, quartz. You have tart with two consonants, and pat with one consonant in the coda. So these are all of the possible syllables that English can have. But there's more to it than just C, V, C. There's numerous restrictions for what combinations are actually possible. For example, if the first consonant is an S, then the next sound cannot be an R. You can choose many sounds uh, after the S, for example, the M in smile speak, slim, sphere, but you cannot have the syllables sran and srim as real syllables of English. Likewise, if you start a syllable with a P or a T, the next sound cannot be a K. So you can have words that start with a P or a T, like plain, train, and clean, but you cannot have the syllables pcane and tcane as possible syllables of English. And again, the description of all of these conditions is called phonotactics. The phonotactics of every language is, uh, is different. For example, Spanish has a different set of syllables that it permits. As you can see here, in Spanish, you can have optional onset uh, consonants and optional glide, which can be uh, the y in yes or the w in wow, for example. Uh, so you have optional uh, two consonants in the onset, an optional glide, you need a nucleus, you have an optional glide as the start of the coda, and then up to two consonants in the rest of the coda. So you can have a syllable that's just a nucleus, like for example, o, which means or. You can have a, a syllable that has two consonants and a glide in its onset, and then the nucleus, such as pliege, which means fold. You could have a syllable that has two glides, so a consonant, a glide, and these two are the onset, then a vowel, and then a glide in the coda, such as way, which means ox. So every language has different phonotactics. And as you can see, English permitted some syllables. Spanish permits some other syllables. Hawaiian, for example, has very restricted phonotactics. And it only allows one optional consonant, one um, vowel, and 
an optional second vowel, which could be a long a lengthening of the first vowel or a different one, as in this example. So the minimum syllable in Hawaiian would be a vowel, like in ahi, tuna. You could have uh, syllables that are CV, such as vahine, woman. So all these three syllables are all CV, CV, CV. And then you could have syllables that are CVV, as the tua in matua, parent. And that's it. Hawaiian will not let you build any other kind of syllable, and that's fine. That is how the phonotactics are described for Hawaiian. And again, not all languages have exactly the same restrictions. So all of these languages, English, German, French, and Italian, allow onsets with two consonants or th uh, in them, or in this case, three consonants. However, they don't all allow the same combinations. For example, in German, you can have K and N as an onset, as in Knopf, button. But you cannot have that one as a valid onset of English, for example. In English, you can have this in the onset, square, but none of the other languages will allow this as an onset. Likewise, Italian would allow the S and the B in sbagliato, mistaken, but none of the other will. And in English, you can have V and R as in vrai, but none of the other will let you do that. So each language has its own uh, restrictions and what syllables it will accept as possible syllables of the language. There's a very good reason why English didn't allow for something like srim or uh, tkan, for example. Usually syllables are have to be built in something called the sonority scale. So there are sounds that are more sonorous because they are louder, for example, vowels, and there are sounds that are less that have less sonority because they are they are not as loud, such as a stop. We compare a very a sound that is that has very low sonority, like p, with a sound with a high sonority, like ah. So in between them, there's sounds with increasing levels of sonority. So stops with the least then fricatives, then nasal stops, then liquids, and so forth. Syllables usually have one sonority peak. So you have to start with sounds with low sonority, then climb up to the peak, and then come down. In cat, for example, you reach a peak at the vowel with a high sonority sound, and then descend onto a stop. Likewise, in sing, you begin with a fricative, go up with a vowel, and then come down with a nasal. So syllables uh, in many languages have one distinctive peak of sonority, and the surrounding parts of the syllables must uh, go from low sonority to higher sonority as you approach the center. There can be slight exceptions, for example, sprints, oscillates in the sonority, but it still has one distinguishable peak. In general, uh, languages accept syllables that have clear sonority peaks. You could have syllables like pla, or for example, pla, where you ascend in sonority and then descend. Syllables with two peaks, particularly two high peaks of sonority, are generally not used in human languages, something like upa, because then people will think that you actually have two syllables because you have two separate peaks. So these are syllables that are, are not very likely in human languages, and these are syllables that could exist in human languages. In summary, the phone tactics of a language is the description of which syllables are possible. And syllables, syllables are usually organized in a sonority scale where they go from less sonority to a sonority peak and then descend from the sonority peak.